All right, Jack, you want to bring up the mics? You got it, Steve. You're all set. Okay. Ken is uh, live down in Texas. Yes, sir. Okay, we're good to go. Hi, Ken. <laughs> yeah, hi, Ken. Okay. So, what are you going to make now? <clears throat> so, we're going to make uh, an orange ice. Okay. Orange sorbet, orange ice, Philadelphia ice. What do you call it, Steve? Lemon ice. Orange lemon ice. Orange, we'll just call it orange ice. Okay. <laughs> so the recipe for this one and a quarter gallons of water, two and a half pounds of sugar. I blended the sugar into the water already. So what I did that uh, I noticed Steve did, doesn't, didn't do. I put a little warm water in. I just find it helps to dissolve the sugar a little, a little better. It still works with cold water, but for me, you know, a quart of hot water and a quart of cold water, blend the sugar in that and then pour it into the rest of it, okay? This is the hard part for me because I'm old. And I closed the lid because I noticed that Steve didn't. I'm not saying he did that on purpose, but hey, I've known Steve for a while. <laughs> so I think this is pretty cool. You see this little emblem right here? This is new on the Emory Thompson machines. I, I, is that new this year, Steve? The ET? Yeah. Oh, we've had for a few years. A few years. Yeah. So I've seen the evolution of the Emory Thompson machines, and uh, i got to tell you, honestly, that's the first time I've noticed it, but when I see that now, I just think of Super Steve. <laughs> yeah, it does look like that, doesn't right? it? Right? Yeah. That's, okay. So uh, this time, I'm going to lift up this little lid. Oh, boy, Steve, you got cookies in the orifice. So I blended here, and you don't have to blend it, but I did it. One quart of Supreme Sorbet Base. The difference between the Supreme Sorbet Base and the Sorbet Base that I used before is this has a higher level of stabilization. Okay, with this product, it requires using sugar to make ices and sorbets. The other Sorbet Base, not the Supreme, but the Sorbet Base, has a higher level of, sol of sweetener solids, so you don't need to add any sugar. That's why we add more of that product so we get the solids to a higher level. So the Supreme Sorbet Base, we added less stabilizer, one quart, and we're going to add one quart of water ice base. Okay. And you can see it glopping in because there's a stabilizer in there and the stabilizer causes that gelatinous look. Steve left me alone with his machine, he might be sorry. Okay, I'm going to add some citric acid. This is an eight ounce bottle. It calls, I'm calling for three ounces. I'm going to eyeball this. Close enough. Yes, in the back. Correct. Okay, so so we call these flavor we call these flavor bases water ice bases. So this is orange cream water ice base, and yes, I added that, and I I put it in a container that also had one quart of supreme sorbet base. So the sorbet base is the stabilization system that will give you that soft creamy texture and allow it to scoop at the same temperature as ice cream. This is your flavor system orange water ice base. This can also be used to make ice cream or actually flavor anything. You can use it in bakery. So you can use this to make a sherbet. You can use it to make orange ice cream, orange soft serve. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, I have everything in here. I'm going to hit begin because then I'm going to hit Italian ice and I'm going to hit start. And because I know this machine now, I'm going to turn on the refrigeration. Now we've been call Steve's been calling for 
about 15 minutes, but we know we've been getting less than that, so I'm going to go to 12. I'll bet that's going to be just about right. Say again? <laughs> that man has his own ice cream store. He makes ice cream now, so he knows his equipment. Better than I do. I, I know flavors. Yeah. Okay, uh, any questions at this point? Okay, so let, let's talk about flavors for a minute. Um, so the word flavor is all encompassing. You hear people say extracts, I use extracts. Well, an extract is a flavor, okay? But an extract has a legal standard of identity. Is it's an alcohol-based flavor. So if, it's, if your flavor does not have alcohol in it, it's not an extract. So, for example, uh, people say coffee extract. Well, you, you'd be hard put to find an actual coffee extract because it would have to have alcohol. In it. Most coffee flavors are concentrated flavors that come from water some form of coffee, whether it's the beans that are roasted or from powdered coffee, okay? So we start with the term flavor, and everything that falls underneath that can use to be flavored ice cream, non-frozen desserts, bakery, uh, candy, anything, okay? So a water ice base is a flavor base. A puree, a processed puree, not just pureed fruit, a processed puree is a flavor base. So there are butter pecan bases out there, there are egg bases out there, there are caramel bases, those are all flavor bases. Okay? When someone says a base, it typically means that there are other things in there besides just a flavor. There's dairy solids, there's fruit solids, there's sweeteners, there's color. Okay. Then when you get into your flavors, there's different types of concentrated flavors. There's emulsions, which are concentrated flavor systems that have gums in them. Just like this has a gum in it, an emulsion would have a, a gum in it also. It could be a xanthan gum or a guar gum, and it just makes it a little thicker. Gums were developed for the bakery industry way back when Steve was around, when Steve was about 20 years old, uh, because bakers, in the old days, they didn't measure. They do now because flavors are much more pure and concentrated than they used to be, and they just throw the stuff in. It was easier to handle if it was in emulsion form, a little thicker, they could handle it better. So an emulsion is a concentrated flavor, okay? An extract has to have alcohol in it. So vanilla is an extract, pure vanilla, two-fold vanilla. But then there's artificial vanillas that don't necessarily have extract, those are flavors. I'm throwing a lot at you right now, but I just want you to understand that flavors are all encompassing, okay? Um, <clears throat> so iRice makes about 40 different types of water ice bases. Water ice bases can be used to flavor anything, including ice cream, okay? Everything from um, apple, to watermelon, and in between. We make some sour products, uh, sour apples, sour watermelon. Uh, you can actually make your own sour Italian ices by just increasing the level of citric acid to a level that you consider to be sour enough for your customers. Of course, remember that the Italian ices are, well, they, they're sold to different generations, but the sour end is for the kids. Sour, tart, a lot of color, kid stuff. So what are the big, the big sellers for the kid's side? Pink, it's about the colors, it's not necessarily about the flavors. Pink and blue are your two biggest sellers. And blue, 10 to 1 over anything else. Okay? Any questions? One thing about Italian ice flavors, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's a touchy subject, but it's, it's a very interesting subject, and that is if, if all of you walked into my office and uh, I had to guess what's your favorite flavor of ice cream, I couldn't do it. So I just have no idea. It's, uh, everybody is such a broad spectrum. 
Italian ices really fall into ethnic backgrounds, uh, which has a tremendous advantage because if you're going to go do a certain festival, you can know in advance what's going to sell. Uh, I've, I've said this before on the videos, but it's, it's important because it's, I'm talking about it strictly from a business standpoint. If you're Italian, you're probably going to order lemon ice. That's the most common flavor amongst Italians. So uh, if, you're, if you're Jewish, it's probably going to be chocolate. If you're uh, Hispanic, it's going to be one of the coconut flavors. If you're black, it's going to be uh, a fruit flavor. Um, so what that means is if you're doing the, um, you know, the uh, Puerto Rican parade that we have in, uh, in New York every year, don't bring chocolate. You know, it's not going to sell. If you're doing the Feast of San Gennaro uh, in Little Italy, you don't have to bring um, coconut Italian ice. It isn't going to sell. So you can literally look at what you're doing and say, um, this is what will probably sell here. If you're a Presbyterian like me, you form a committee to make the decision for you because Presbyterians only know how to make committees. Uh, but it's a, being an ethnic product, uh, like let's say also if you're doing, um, you know, I think I mentioned this morning, an arts and crafts, you know, uh, sculptures and things like that. You know, don't bring cherry Italian ice. Don't bring uh, uh, mango Italian ice. Maybe mango, but don't don't bring uh, the flavors like that. Bring kiwi. Bring uh, you said sour apple would be a great one to do, and uh, charge more for it because it's a whole different clientele that you're selling to. When I walk into a restaurant uh, to sell them Italian ices, again I change the name to sorbet raise the price and um, you know the pro it isn't going to be lemon sorbet anymore it's going to be uh, it's not going to be lemon ice it's going to be lemon twist sorbet um, so you're taking the same product and, and remarketing it which is you know kind of fun but also uh, unlike any other food that I can think of or any other beverage uh, you can know in advance what's going to sell so that's a fun uh, fun point that Steve uh, just mentioned is you, know, you can add anything you want to ices or, or to ice cream. Um, now, th again, the misnomer that sorbet is not a non-dairy a non frozen dessert, it's something different. Uh, it is a non-dairy frozen dessert, but it is perceived as a higher quality product. So if you want to just add some fruit, like on this, uh, this orange ice, the, the recipe I had here called for a zest of an orange, but Steve doesn't have any orange trees out back, so you're going without. But I would just zest one orange into this batch, just throw it in there. It just gives you a little bit of texture and it actually gives you a little bit more flavor, okay? Same with the lemon. Lemon is, is big. I, you know, lemon ice is probably, next to mango, the biggest selling yep. ice out there. Oh yeah. And bigger in some markets. Yeah, um, I, market. I love the zest in a, in a lemon. It just, just gives it a little more of a kick. So if I didn't shut that refrigeration off, we'd be done, but we have about another minute here. <laughs> How about equipment questions? Anybody have any uh, ideas about that or uh, where to buy dipping cabinets, uh, tubs, anything like that? Yes? The smaller one, does it come with the stand? No, the stand's separate, and there's a, everything I do has a reason. Sometimes they're pretty strange, but there are reasons. Um, you can put this, this thing, uh, shipping weight is 308 pounds. It's a, and, and we're not putting you know, lead weights or bricks in it. it. It really is a solid piece of equipment. Probably weighs about 270 when you get it uh, shipped. And it'll go on a table like this or any sturdy table. I designed the stand, or I didn't design, my engineer. I, I stand in the shower in the morning and I think up insane ideas. And then I come into work and everybody goes, oh no, here comes Steve with another idea. And, and then by the afternoon, the idea is off the drawing board and we've got the first one of them. That's how fast we work. We designed this for a couple of reasons. One being a pyramid design makes it uh, wider at the bottom and makes it more stable. So you're not gonna knock the machine over if you put it on a small table. But the real reason is uh, if I stand up really tall like this, I might measure out at 5'8". So that means uh, the NBA is not gonna pick me for playing basketball. What it really means is when you put that machine on this table, all day long making ices, I'm reaching up over my shoulders 
to pour the product in. That gets very exhausting, very tiring, tough on your muscles. So by lowering the table down to someone of my height and, and, uh, and, and an awful lot of women, uh, it's now here. This is a lot easier to deal with than here. So that's the reason for the stand. Um, it's $453. For $453, you can find a nice table. But if you want something that the machine will bolt down to, puts it at a very good working height, uh, is on casters so you can move it around, it's ideal. So we sell a lot of them, but it's, not a, it's by no means a requirement. Um, the, the shelf here uh, is adjustable. So whether we're using a three gallon tub or the six quart gelato pan, oh, it's ready. Take a look. Yeah. Rudy, what would you do without us? Rudy, I was in the rum just before this, so. <laughs> Beautiful looking product. Okay. I do not claim to be an ice cream maker. I just have the general foundation down. Well, you make good ices. That looks great. You all ready to come up and try it? See how they're not rushing up? This is what happens. Towards the afternoon, it's like, the four this morning was, oh, good, we're going to have ice cream, we're going to have ices. Now it's like, oh, he's made something else. I'm getting exhausted. Girl.